Our second scripture reading this morning comes from the book of Acts. Two separate and very short readings from the book of Acts. It takes place early in the development of the Christian church. And these folks really weren't quite sure to what, ex what to expect as the new church grew and expanded. And they had a lot of questions and a lot of obstacles. The disciples at the time would travel from church to church and offer up words of encouragement and let them know that they were on the right track, that the Lord was still with them. And here this morning we, we read two of the short stories of encouragement that these men practiced in the early church. Acts 11, verses 22 through 26. News of this had reached the ears of the church at Jerusalem. So they sent Barnabas to Antioch. And when he arrived and saw the evidence of the grace of God, he was glad, and he encouraged them all to remain true to the Lord with all their hearts. And he was a good man, full of the Holy Spirit and faith, and a great number of people were brought to the Lord. Then Barnabas went to Tarsus to look for Saul. And when he found him, he brought him to Antioch. So for a whole year, Barnabas and Saul met with the church and taught great numbers of people. And the disciples were called Christians first at Antioch. And continuing on in the book of Acts, chapter 15. These men were also sent off and went down to Antioch, where they gathered the church together and delivered a letter. The people read it and were glad for its encouraging message. And Judas and Silas, who themselves were prophets, said much to encourage and strengthen the brothers. After spending some time there, they were sent off by the brothers with a blessing of peace to return to those who had sent them. But Paul and Barnabas remained in Antioch, where they and many others taught and preached the word of the Lord. In my previous life, if you will, working for a construction company, it was not unusual to have to travel, not just this state, but all over New England. And a number of years back, I had a busy, one busy day during the week where I'd have to go to Wolfboro and have a business meeting, a construction meeting at the, the Huggins Hospital when they were going through their major renovations not too long ago. And I'd have a morning meeting there and then I'd have to leave and I ended up in Manchester at the, the LA Hospital where we had another construction project that I had a meeting that I needed to go to every week. And every week I would drive from Huggins Hospital to the Elliott Hospital and I'd go through Chichester. And in Chichester there was a small country church that was very similar to us and that they had a, a sign out front that they would change their messages on regularly. Only this one was quite large and it was right near the edge of the road. And it got so I would look forward to those messages. Because they would post messages from the scripture. The positive and encouraging messages would be on the board. And right at the bottom they would put the, the particular scripture that it came from. And it was always the, the positive messages out of the Bible. None, none of the stuff that sometimes we can see that you know talked about sin and repenting and all those other things. But messages of hope and joy and love. And I thought, so I looked forward to this sign when I would pass it. I appreciated it. But lo and behold, a month or so went by and that sign ended up in the news. It was on Channel 9 and WMUR. Apparently, somebody who drove by that section of road regularly took offense to the Christian messages that were on the board. And they approached the town to get the town to try to have them remove that sign. It was all positive stuff. I'm like, this is, this is symptomatic of our world today sometimes. Simply because it comes from the scripture as Christians, some people get very upset. Even if it's encouraging. Even if it's positive and hopeful. I found it amazing. I'm a little bit discouraging. 
It was about this time of year we would go by and I had to watch the school buses. And I got thinking about that sign and, and how it represented some segment of our culture and society. And it reminded me of going, seeing, used to, I'm not sure we even see it anymore, on the, on the sports venues, on TV. Football games and back baseball games and everything. Do you remember there used to be some people or a single guy who would hang up, hold up the sign in the middle of the crowd that said John 316 on that? You guys remember that sign? used to see it all the time at all the sports venues. But it's disappeared. These signs on the side of the road weren't even like John 3.16, you know, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that we shall not perish from the earth. It got me thinking. Encouragement. This was what that sign was meant to do, to encourage people. We're at the time of year, what I call the, the season of encouragement, if you will. Our young ones are going back to school. What do they need when they get to school or before they even get to school? They need some encouragement. Right? <coughs> if you can remember all those years back when you first went to school for the first day, do you remember how you felt? It was a little intimidating. It was a little scary. But you can remember... I've done it with my own children. It's going to be okay. Everything's going to be all right. You can do this. Football games, soccer games, all the things our kids do and our professional athletes do really start to kick off at this time of year. And we encourage them. We love to stand on the sidelines and cheer them on and Help them strive to do better performance and to, to win that game. I used to, and I still do, like going to those big venues, the Red Sox and so forth, to, to be part of the crowd. And if the team starts to struggle a little bit or the game gets a little slow, do you remember what the crowd does <clears throat> to encourage the team? They start the wave, right? You've never been part of that? Start the wave. Start, somebody gets the idea in their head and throw their arms up in the air. Next thing you know, it's rippling all around the stadium. And sometimes the pastor could use that. Right? There she goes. Exactly. Get a little flat, get a little boring. Throw the choir in there. Come back there. Now we need encouragement. It's not easy to be uplifting and positive all the time. You need encouragement. Here this morning, we shared a little story of perhaps the first wave in our scripture. A one-man wave, Moses, the leader of the Israelite people. What we didn't share in the morning scripture was just before that, the Israelites are grumbling against Moses again. They're tired, they're thirsty, they're asking him, why did you bring us out into this wilderness? Now we have the Amalekites there. And they're getting ready to do battle with us. So Moses goes up on the hill in the story we share with the staff in his hand so Joshua, the leader of the Israelites, can see him. And all the Israelites can see him up there on the mountain. And he lifts the staff up. That symbol of power and strength and reminder that God is there with them in this battle. This encouragement that they're not alone. That the creator of the universe is literally on their side. But Moses, being human, his arms come down. It's interesting to note that the staff he lifts it represents the power and strength of God. And as his arms come down, the Israelites start to lose the battle. It's not the strength and power of God that's failing. It's Moses' strength that is failing. So Aaron and her step beside him, and they help lift his arms up again, and they hold him there. A very clear and symbolic representation of us in our everyday lives, how we need others around us to encourage us when we get tired, when, when life gets difficult, when the battle seems like it's starting to be lost. We need support and encouragement. And it can be hard. It can be hard to be that source of encouragement to others. Have you ever 
tried to teach children how to tie their shoes. Why do you laugh? Right? You tell them, this is how you do it. You can do this. And they try and they try and they try. And sometimes they just don't get it. So you keep encouraging them. And eventually they get there. Or riding a bike. <laughs> or my favorite, trying to teach my children algebra. You know how difficult it was to be remaining encouraging while teaching your children algebra? <laughs> Not an easy task. How about something more practical for us as adults? Trying to kick a bad habit. Perhaps you're a smoker and you've tried to quit smoking. And you've been doing all the things that you need to do to, to stop, but eventually you find yourself failing. Your willpower gets a little weak. You need other people around you to say, hey, how's it going? How are you doing? Are you keeping up with the, the quitting smoking? Good job. I know how hard it is. See, we need people to encourage us to keep going. This process of growing into a better person is difficult. It's particularly hard to be an encourager when you're watching someone and it seems like they're just not making any progress. What do you say? What do you say to them as they go through their struggle? It's going to be all right. You can do this. You're going to make it. Don't give up. It wasn't too long ago, a week or two ago, we had one of the Bible studies that I've been going through. And they did an illustration called Rain. This parent, this father, was, was carrying his small infant child out into the woods for a, for a simple walk on a beautiful, gorgeous day. A little one-year-old boy in his backpack. He gets to the far end of the journey, and guess what happens? The rain clouds come in, and the rain comes down, and it starts pouring. And he has to try to get back. This little one, both unprepared for this, starts crying and all upset. And he, he takes him out of his backpack and he puts him inside his shirt and his sweater and he carries him the rest of the way home and says, It's going to be okay. We're going to make it. That's exactly what God calls out to us in our trials and our journeys. It's going to be okay. You're going to make it. Many times he asks us to be that encourager to others. See, the church in Antioch is all about this. Those two little short scriptures that we shared this morning. There's a lot of change going on very quickly amongst the churches and amongst the, amongst the, the Jewish people who have now come to follow Jesus Christ. This confusion, this controversy, this persecution. And they're struggling. There's many little churches and not enough disciples. There's only 12 of those guys, if you remember. There's many, many more churches than this. So the disciples go from church to church with letters of encouragement and help and teaching. Paul and Barnabas, Judas and Silas. These are just some of the people we shared with this morning. And they come to the churches and they basically say this. Doing a good job. Keep it up. God is with you. Keep your strength. Things do go wrong. There are obstacles in the way. One of the things that we didn't share in the scripture was the letter. The letter that they brought with them to Antioch. The letter wasn't full of pie in the sky helpful comments. In fact, it was quite the opposite. The letter told one of the churches, the church in Antioch, that they needed to be careful of sexual immorality. That they needed to be careful of slandering one another. That was the basic content of the letter. It wasn't a great letter of, of hope. It was quite the opposite. Yet they found it very encouraging. Why do you think that might be? 
because Paul and Silas and Barnabas and Judas stayed with them and encouraged them to face the things in their life that weren't great and tell them, God is with you. It's going to be all right. You can do this. This is the kind of message we as Christians should be presenting to the world around us. We know the stuff that goes on. A lot of it isn't good. But the message we bring of encouragement and hope is this. It doesn't matter what you've done. It doesn't matter what you look like. It doesn't matter how important or unimportant you are. It's going to be all right. You are forgiven. You are accepted for who you are. You are loved deeply and fully. You are not alone. You are never, ever alone. You have support. See, we are here with you. We will lift your arms when they get tired. You are God's treasure. We are called to be encouragers. We are called to view the world with real eyes and recognize the issues and problems. But then to take the next step and say through Jesus Christ and the love that the Lord has given us, it's going to be okay. You're going to make it. A positive word goes a long way. We are the best encouragers that God has for the world around us. God has been encouraging his people since the very beginning. He calls us to do the same. I want to share in closing just some, some words of encouragement from the book of Isaiah. And this is what they say. The spirit of the sovereign Lord is upon us because the Lord has anointed us to preach good news to the poor. He has sent us to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom to the captives and release from darkness to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor, to comfort all who mourn and provide for those who grieve, to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes and the oil of gladness instead of mourning and a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. And those who encourage will be called oaks of righteousness, a planting of the Lord for the display of His splendor. As we close today, do you need to be encouraged? Find someone who can help lift your arms. Who are you encouraging? Whose arms are you lifting? It is a gift and blessing to be able to share in another human being's life and to know that through the power of love, grace, and forgiveness, it is going to be all right. Let us pray. Lord, you have blessed us with a power and understanding beyond compare. Your Holy Spirit lives within us to encourage us, to strengthen us. And you sent your Son, Jesus, to, to show us what it really means to love and to encourage. The one who bore all the pain and suffering of the world upon himself came back to life. He overcame to show us the way, to remind us that it's going to be all right. And he asks us that we do the same for the people around us. So Lord, I just ask this day, a special anointing upon your people to be the light and hope of the world as you have created each of us to be. We give you thanks. In 
Jesus' name I pray. Amen.